guys. Um, this evening I've been writing a blog post all about how I'm using um, Sasa for science adventures with my um, eldest two. For those of you that don't know, I've got Daniel who is uh, five and a half-ish and um, who is four. I've also got Harry who's down to 18 months but he doesn't really do this at the moment for obvious reasons. When I first um, sort of started looking at the Sassafras adventures, I was found myself really overwhelmed about how I would um, put all the work together with the children were doing in a way that was accessible to them and a way that made sense. Um, as you'll see as I go through this video, there's quite a lot of things um, that you can do with Sassafras and I just thought it would be useful for me just to spend 5-10 minutes sharing about how we set it up. So for those of you that don't know, um, Sassafras Science Adventures is a science based um, living book I guess. It follows the adventures of tracing Blaine Sassafras through this book. Um, I got this from Amazon for I think about £10. And um, You can read the book and just do your own thing or you can purchase various other things um, online. So I've got all my other things in this huge branch folder. The things that you can purchase include um, a guide to, like a lap booking guide, which is this. Um, we did start doing a lap booking, but it just it didn't work for us, and I'll explain why um, a bit later on. And in addition to that, um, you buy this Sassafras Guide to Zoology. Um, I really like this, I'll explain again why, but I do think that purchasing that to use alongside um, the, the storybook itself is really useful. So I'm just going to um, spend 5-10 minutes just to go through the various bits and pieces that we use and how we use them and how I've set it out with my two children. Uh, bearing in mind that my kids are 5 and 4, so we're doing this at quite um, a low level I guess. If you've got older children you can certainly still use the Sassafras stuff um, and you just take it to a bit of more, more depth, more detail. Okay, so first um, you definitely need to get yourself a copy of this book. Um, it's really well written, really accessible and you read it in small chunks and chapters. The guide, which I'll talk you through in a moment, explains what you should read and when you should read it and gives you accompanying, accompanying um, things to do alongside it. So we'll take a quick look at that now. So, so this is the um, Sassafras Guide to Zoology. I've printed off the first uh, 50 pages, I think, of this. I like this because, as I've said, it gives you stacks of stuff. There's an intro which tells you all about the Sassafras, um, a book list, and then um, gives you like an additional uh, list of books that you can look at to help sort of supplement the reading. I'll be honest, we haven't used that. The only additional book I've bought is this one, um, the Dorlin Kindersley Encyclopedia of Animals which I think I picked up for maybe two or three pound from probably uh, worldofbooks.com, but you can get it on Amazon and various other places. Um, I tend to supplement with books that we already have at home because we have stacks and stacks of books, but yet yeah, this does give you plenty of other books. So if you're doing chapter two, here's all the other books that you might want to do if your child is particularly interested in um, elephants or giraffes or cheetahs. So how this works is there's lots of information um, about projects and activities and any supplies that you might need. Um, these are a list of other characters, which is a good reference. And then it takes it chapter by chapter, gives you a chapter summary and gives you details of any experiments or projects and gives you um, two schedules. There's a two day a week schedule and a five day a week schedule. Um, I'll be honest, I don't stick to those. We tend to just pick this up as and when we have a spare hour or two. Um, some days we'll just read the book and then a couple of days later we'll get on to the activities. So if I um, just move to this first one. So this first section, our uh, chapter two, is when the story really gets going and it's all about the African grasslands. And it gives you details of what the summary is about. Um, it gives you details of an experiment to do, which I think, if I remember correctly, this one was about cat size. And it gives you details of what you would need for any projects or activities. When I approach this with my children, I simply look at what these things are and I tick them off to make sure we're covering the bits that we want to do. So it gives you a two day schedule or a five day schedule. As I said, we just pick at the things that we want to do um, as and when we have a bit of time to do them. It then gives you the details of what you should be reading in the Sassafras storybook and gives you details of the encyclopedic readings. So there are two encyclopedias that it recommends and we have the DK one 
So these are the pages to reference for mammals, lions and cheetahs. And I do look at these, I do look these up because the pictures are really clear in that um, encyclopedia and the children really like looking at it. If you want to look at the additional library books, it's all there. It then gives you details of the notebooking element. Uh, and I have this for the kids and this is what we do. So this is essentially the answers that the children should be writing in. So you have a notebook, um, a, new, a habitat information sheet, animal record sheets, and then it gives you some vocab that the children should be learning. You've then got details of your scientific demonstration, so what you need, what you do, and then what the learning, the explanation is. And then it gives you details of some projects that sort of span the whole book. So this food chart one spans the whole book and we're doing that. And we're not doing this habitat project. It gives you details of additional activities. So I think in this one we did make the cheetah mask. And if you're into copy work, um, then there's a copywork sentence here. Um, I do this occasionally with Daniel. Uh, he's really into writing some days, less into other days. And then there's a small section for your own notes. And it follows that pattern throughout the entire um, guide. As I said, I really like that. I like the fact that it's all there and I can pick it up and run with it. In addition to this, there is um, the lap booking guide, which just let me find it. So the lap booking guide, um, I thought my kids would really enjoy doing this. We, they do like lap booking and I am a big fan of lap booking because I think it presents information in a memorable and easily accessible way for the kids. That said, this just hasn't worked for us and we started it, but we haven't finished it. So it gives you lesson pages and it gives you an overview of what each mini lap book is and bits and pieces to put in. I'll show you the details of the first one that we made. So we started this lap book um, for the grasslands, which is the first habitat that you visit. So we did the front cover, <coughs> excuse me, and then we started putting these in, these are little mini books, I guess, where you'd write a fact about each creature. There's a colouring page there, and then there's some vocab cards. Um, as you can see, we didn't finish this, we didn't add the cheetah in, and there's another little bit to put in. We didn't finish it because I personally found it a little bit repetitive for the children and I would much prefer to do um, the other uh, side dat log which we save in these files. So the children each have um, just an A4 standard ring binder, so I think this one is Emma's. Um, and this is just the official sassafras, we call it the side dat log book. And this is what the two twins fill in essentially as they're going on their adventures and your children complete it. So we have a section uh, for each habitat, so this is the grassland section. So we start with um, like an overview of the grasslands, so the location of the habitat, sorry, is grasslands, located in Kenya, and detail about rainfall temperature and some characteristics and the animals that they'll study. We then have a map of where grasslands can be found, and then this is where they've studied, Kenya, and then the continents that the grasslands can be found on. There's then a page for each animal, and this is the bit that gets repetitive, so you can see this is very similar to that small fold-out book. Um, so, so you write down the animal name, if it's a mammal, reptile, um, carnivore, herbivore, omnivore, where it's found, and then some facts that they've learned which they should pick up in this story. So we've got that for each one. There's also these colouring sheets, um, so there's a whole range of colouring sheets. I think this is about $5 to buy this colouring pack. Um, I know you can find stacks of free colouring principles, but I like that these are all in the order that you'll use them. There's a small sentence, gives you some reference to what you're doing. So this one is male lions have a mane, female, female lions do the hunting. And I just like that I can just print them off. I can leave them there for the kids to do. Um, Harry, who's 22 months, he enjoys doing these. And that just really works for me. Um, page on cheetah, giraffe, and then I think that's it for grasslands. And then the same for the desert. So deserts in Egypt, um, very little rain, and it's hot days, cold nights. Again, a map, continents. And then we did a bit of the coffee work here. Uh, and then um, the various animals. I've also included where we've done some of our own artwork. <coughs> Excuse me. So for um, the desert, we did um, a desert sunset. So we simply got watercolours, uh, painted watercolours and we cut out some black sugar paper in to make, into these sort of silhouette shapes to make a desert sunset. And we also did this, which I found, um, I think this is from learningtowalk.com. 
And this is basically, it was a sheet of animals and they have to cut them out and stick them in the desert or um, not in the desert. And they, they quite enjoyed doing that. It was a good way of sort of embedding some of the stuff that they'd learnt. So that is essentially how we use sassafras. Um, the grasslands, the, not the grasslands stuff, sorry, the lap booking stuff didn't work for us. I just found it much too repetitive. Um, I found these were very, very similar to the side dash sheets that they were writing out for their folders. And it just was something that the children were getting frustrated with and just weren't enjoying. The way that I approach this is that for each um, section we're doing, I just make sure I've got the colouring sheets to hand. So we've moved on to the Canadian farm. So I've printed off, um, I think, most of the colouring sheets for this one. So I've got the one about cows, one about Canadian farms in general. Oops. Copies there. Um, a, a bee, and I think I've got a hen somewhere as well. I then have a section um, here. I mark in my guide where I'm up to, so I'm up to chapter six. I make sure I have the equipment for any experiments we're doing, look at any suggested projects. I just sort of make sure that I'm familiar with the information they're learning. I then have the logbook pages printed. So this is um, the habitat information sheet for Canadian farms. So the children will do this later this week. There's the domestic farms around the world. Um, so they'll complete this. And then there's the pages for each animal. So cow, bee, uh, hen and spider. I like that they also include in the logbook uh, some blank pages. So the here is where I do some of the copy work if that's what the children want to do. Um, there's like observation, so observation sheets from some of the experiments. So we did fill this in for the cat's eye experiment, I think. There's lots to go at. Um, yes, yeah, so I just make sure I have them ready for each chapter and then I can pick them up and run with them. And I always have sort of the, the next chapter ready to go with. Um, in terms of how Sassafras is working for us, I really, really like this and I can see it being a series that we will use um, pretty much in its entirety, I expect, if the children continue to engage with it as well as they have been doing. Um, as I said, we're about a quarter of the way um, through this first volume, which is all about zoology. And I'm not sort of keeping myself to any particular timetable with this, but I'm hoping to have it done um, maybe by sort of October, November time with a view to start in volume two um, in the new year, which I guess, um, I think it's anatomy, the next one. So that'll give me a bit of time to make sure I've got all the, the various bits and pieces for that. Um, so yeah, if you use Sassafras yourself, I'd love to hear how you get on with it, how you organize your things. And if there's anything that I could be doing that I'm not doing to bring this to life. So thanks for watching guys, and I hope it's been useful.